So welcome to this week's preview show, Portsmouth at Home. Former Portsmouth player, Steve Simmons. So it's seven points over the last three games. That is some return, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a decent return. I think like if you're trying to challenge at the top end of the table, I think that's what you've got to do. Uh, and then back it up with, with some more points, hopefully three on Saturday. The 7-2 at Gillingham was a bizarre, baffling, brilliant performance, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was just, it was just one of them random games. Like You never knew what, what was going to happen. Um, and then I think, yeah, that's <laughs> kind of what it was. It was just a random sort of game. And then you follow that against Wigan away, who are one of the st strongest teams in the division, aren't they, with a fantastic point? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think, you know, they've got a couple of games in hand on, on Rotherham who are top, isn't they? So you'd expect them, you know, you'd say that they're top of the league. Um, so I think, yeah, it was a good point, obviously, you know, and then... <laughs> It's tough, you know, coming back late and obviously you're tired and that, but obviously excited for the weekend as well. There was a comment on Twitter. It was some goal, wasn't it? And somebody mentioned that you were running up alongside it just to get a better look. Yeah, no, nah, it, uh, it was a great goal, to be fair. Great goal. Um, yeah, I did feel like I had the best view in the house because I was just <laughs> following it all the way, but no, nah, it, was, it was a very good goal. And now we look ahead to Portsmouth, another big crowd expected. Um, a team you know very well as well. Yeah, no, I had a good, I had a good time at Portsmouth. To be fair, like I really enjoyed it down there, um, and it's a good club. And obviously, as always, that there'll be a tough team to beat. But yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously we're expecting another big crowd. You know, obviously we hit over ten k at Sheffield Wednesday. You know now the, the difference that can make. Yeah, definitely. I think you know we beat Sheffield Wednesday three two, and that was a probably give a good game for the fans. To yeah. be fair, um, you know. First half, I think they was quite a bit better than us, um, and then obviously second half we've come out and, and managed to win. But but yeah, hopefully we can maybe be better throughout the whole ninety come Saturday, um, but deliver the same result. Yeah, and I guess the message is just keep that momentum going, now, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think I think it's you know I quite I, I prefer to have games sort of closer because it just you know you can just on to the next one straight away, you know what I mean? As, um, sometimes having the whole week breaks it up a little bit, but it's nice to get a momentum going over the short breaks. Last weekend, Cameron Brannigan stole all the headlines with four penalties in one game. There was only one person I could get in here to have a chat to, wasn't there? I was really disappointed there were no penalties last night. Were you? Devil. <laughs> Said before the game, I hope I get one, but no. Um, 
good result in the end. You know, they're a good side. You credit where credit's due. They're good at what they do, and you know, we we found it tough at times, but we dug deep, stuck together like we do, and. You know, we take a point and move on. But you just said to me, black and blue, that was a proper battle, wasn't it? Everybody yeah. really fighting for everything. Yeah, I mean, feeling it a bit today, like my legs are a bit sore, but yeah, I mean, last night's gone now, and we look to Saturday, it's another huge game. I'm sure our fans will get behind us and push us all the way, so I'm looking forward to it. Did it annoy you having to fight Steve Seddon's fight and get a yellow card for it? Or? I said to Elliot, lads need to back each other up a bit more, you know, we need to stick together. So, yeah, I didn't like what he did. He threw the ball in Seddon's face, so. You can only improve it though, can't you? Well, <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, are you surprised at the amount of media interest after you did four penalties? You've got uh, Hawksby and Jacob tomorrow on Talk Sport, you've got Soccer AM coming down. Are you surprised by all this? Yeah, a bit mental, isn't it? I mean, at the time when obviously you're playing the game, you don't even think about stuff like that. And then I remember after the game, it was like, I couldn't even get on my phone because it was just, 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 yeah. <laughs> just content and then the Twitter went mad. And then, Obviously, the Instagram, but yeah, it's good. Um, but it's one of them, and it's like we got the three points. That's just the only thing I was bold about, to be honest. But I mean, well, yeah, I'm happy I scored four. All points. I've done all week is deal with you because <laughs> if it wasn't dealing with the four penalties, uh, there was a load of speculation. Let's just get that out of the way. Never wanted to leave, correct? Yeah, I never wanted to leave. I said it in the interview. You know, I said it in the interview after the game. I'm happy. Here. You know, and you get people saying different things and this and that and. I don't take any notice, I've said it before, I don't care what people say and I'm happy here, I've said it many yeah. a time, so my focus is to get promoted to this club and I'll you know, give the club everything that I can. Uh, I saw your dad and your brother, your brother says he's better at penalties than you, is this correct? Listen, I've seen my brother play, he ain't better than me at Penn, to tell you that. What, what does he pretend to be? Does he pretend to be a midfielder? Or I what? don't know what he was, it was back in the day when he yeah. used to play Sunday League football and to be honest, he was madder than me. Your dad's arguably madder than you. Oh God, you should see him brother when he used to play. <laughs> he was bad. He was bad. Um, at one stage, uh, I probably don't know if I should tell you this, but I remember when he lost his head that much, he took his boot off and threw it at the ref. <laughs> I'm not quite that bad. Well, I don't so, know. <laughs> so, I yeah, know. I mean, you have a laugh about it now, but yeah, he should never have done that. But yeah, I mean. It's nice that they were there to see it, that's a sort of. Yeah, nice. and he's just. Just not like it's not better than me at Pens. Any sport? Is he better than you at any sport? Nah. No, good thinking would be. Last thing, Portsmouth on Saturday. We've won a real good run. The big games keep coming because they'll fill out the away end, we'll fill out the home ends. Big crowd. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, we were saying that's what we want. You know, they're the games we're going to play in. Um, like the Chef Wednesday at home, that was that was great the atmosphere, it was great. The place was bouncing, the way we won the game was fantastic. So I can't wait. And Newark and the boys, I mean, I said before, Last night's gone, we take the point and move on and look to Saturday and everyone's buzzing. A big game, big crowd expected on Saturday for Portsmouth. Around about 10,000 people again. Now the government rules have changed. The last game we asked you to do Covid protocols and Covid passports to get in. Those don't apply, those rules have slightly changed this time. Look on the website for details and then come along. I think it's loosening up a little bit. I think people are getting more comfortable going out to places and being around. So if you haven't been to a game, if you've been watching us online all season, come on, now's the time. Come and see what we're all about because the entertainment has been fantastic. Two really good games away at Gillingham uh, and then away at Wigan on Tuesday night. Now, as well as the football this week, we've also had transfer deadline day. And uh, it's a rare occasion when we can get Mark Thomas, the head of recruitment at the club, to come in front of the camera. So we'll end this week's preview show with a look at how recruitment has been done and look back at deadline day and this transfer window. We'll see you Saturday. I've turned the camera on early just to prove that you are never off your bloody phone. What are you doing? The window's closed. No, the window is always open, Chris. Um, you are, there are a lot of people who don't like doing interviews. Amy is one. Uh, you are the most reluctant interviewee ever. Um, why is that, Mark? <laughs> What's the benefit of it? Yeah, but because I just want people to understand how hard you guys worked in the transfer window. That's all I've got you on here for. If you had to estimate how many hours you put in in the last month, Bruh. people wouldn't believe it, would they? No, because you see a signing when it happens, and you see the end product of it, and you know roughly some of the background work that goes into it. But I think people probably won't appreciate the background work that's gone into 20, 30, 40 players to get one over the line. Yeah. The amount of phone calls and, for me, it's phone calls. 
more it, than it is anything else. If you are almost impossible for the last week of the deadline because you're just on the phone, off the phone, whatever. Um, just for want of an argument, uh, Oshin, I can't pronounce his name, but Oshin, yep. when did he first come on the radar? He was a rare one for us because he was quite a quick moving one. Uh, most ones when we do them, especially the Irish lads, tend to be a season or a good half season yeah. watch. Um, we visited him, we do a, a search for all young players playing every month and we've got the minutes and he was flagged um, a year or two ago and we looked then, wasn't ready and then he was flagged again, he was only flagged in December probably yeah. um, but fortunately we've got good video staff here so we managed to whiz through it quickly do the numbers work on him, it does very well on that and then we've been over during January so it was, a, it was pretty much all in January that one it's right. quick, quick I'm one. not um, giving the game away here you, you say we do the numbers game on him, which I understand because I see the level of detail you go into yep. don't give the magic away to everybody at home when you say the numbers game, what stats are we looking at here? Number of games played, goals scored, got, it's not as simple as that, is it? No, we've got two or three different ways we do it. So obviously, age and numbers and games do play a part. Yeah. Part of the attraction for him was he was part-time football. So you take a chance on someone a year later than you would if they were full-time, because there's more development to go. It might take him longer to hit the ground running. But then, pretty much everywhere in Europe we get pretty much every stat of everyone, every touch everyone has made. And we've got two or three, uh, to describe it correctly for you, indexes yeah. that we can put stats in and it's uh, weighted to what we want from every position and every role on the pitch and it tells you how suitable they are to us and how much they're likely to improve over the next year. Yeah, you are, You're constantly evolving that software as well. Cause that's yeah, it's changed every year. It's an in-house one that yeah. we've sort of put together. Um, and he does well on it, he doesn't go outstanding on any particular attribute, but he doesn't do poorly on any particular attribute. And for what we want for the role he's going to play for us, he does well, enough, yeah. enough to have something to work with. How does it work? Do you say to the gaffer, I'm going to stick with Oshin because yeah. he's a work in progress, let's yeah. put it that way to start with. I'll stick with him, do you say to the gaffer, we've got one for you, he does this, or does the gaffer say, we want this? What no, we. Want? Especially with the indexes and how clear the gaffer is, we already know what he wants from every position. We're more likely to push a player if there isn't too much blocking the pathway already, especially when it was, say, Luke coming in as a centre back and there's only one, we only have two yeah. senior centre backs at a time. Um, and Oshin coming in midfield, we haven't got masses of the type of role that he plays, and we needed to add physicality, which he adds, and the manager will say, I need a little bit more towards this type. But then it'll be more, we do the work and say, I think this is a good investment, you need to have a look at that, which is yeah. what I should ask. Uh, the board are off, obviously, the other side of the world and stuff. Yep. Doesn't matter that much with communication. It's the time difference it's is the, the problem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's the time difference. It's not as big an issue on a deadline day as what people think, because we tend to have known everyone we're going for before. There are some reactive ones always, especially unless you've got the biggest biggest budget in the league, you'll yeah. always have to do reactive ones because we're trying to react and take ones that have missed clubs that are better than us. Yeah. Um, so at our level there's always going to be some of them. But you can wake them up to sign things, they will answer their phone. Yeah. It's harder the week probably before that because then we're working on their time zone so it's see through the night, touch base in the morning. Yeah. Um, but they're fairly available, fairly are quite good. Um, we are, that window is now closed. There are players out there, non-contract players, there are other people available. I don't actually know the rules. Who, who, who could we sign now? We can't sign players that have been at football league clubs? or No, we can sign anyone who hasn't got a contract as long as the contract was settled or terminated within the window. Ah, I see. So if someone has settled their contract deadline day, we can still have a look at signing them now. So there's two or three we're looking at now. Wow. No, don't get everybody's hope. So what are you doing? It doesn't mean we're going to sign them, does no. it? But you have to look at every option. if. If we can, so we will. Does it annoy you when you see names that we're linked with, uh, linked all across social media, and you go, oh, I don't want them to know about that yet? Does it annoy it you? It annoys you when the names that are legitimate, it's quite amusing when it's ones we've not even spoke about or yeah. had a look, and there was rooms of people coming into the training ground to have a look at them. We've not. I one we of us would have seen attention. Them, but yeah. Um, but then, like, Ocean was out the day before, and you've, you've no idea 
how or where that comes from. No, and sometimes we so that's, sit, that, that side of it's frustrating. I will tell people we sit and look at each other and go, well, how's that got out? Because he's not even turned in, he's not in the same country yet. Yeah. So, yeah, all a bit amusing. Um, and last thing, I have to ask you, do you think people were put off when they came into the training ground by the smell of Deliveroo green curry? The last that permeated day. the last day. It was too late, they couldn't go anywhere else then. We've got to eat people at home, we've got to eat. So yeah, there was no way of, uh, once they're in the building. But I think the training ground's an impressive enough place. Do you think it actually is? We used to do, when I joined, we used to take people to the stadium to hide them from the training ground. Right. Because the stadium was impressive on the inside of it. Whereas now we take people here because for the league there's probably only one or two better so it's a bigger selling point especially when you're taking people from better clubs than you and they're not expecting it if you can bring them here and show them around we've got a selling point now so it's big unless, it's, unless they want green curry when they come unless in. they want green curry you want to keep them away from Aldred as well that's the thing and last thing I want to just explain to people at home how we work because we got on great we have no troubles the way we work as a working relationship however I've given up asking you who's coming in until they walk through the door there's no point me and you having a conversation, is there? Because no, sometimes you'll tip me off a little bit, but... But you're the leak, so we're just trying to keep... Yeah, I'm the mole, aren't I? No, I'm not going to leak it, but... If people knew the number of names that we had in that last week, that yeah. there were sort of discussions about and stuff, Cause it's, it's phenomenal. Especially in the last week, because it's not about making one signing. It might be one will affect the second one. Yeah. And that was probably the delay for us. We had three or four people. Yeah. pre-lined up but it was if we did one we couldn't do the other or and that knocks onto another so there's no point me giving you a tee up for that one because yeah. there might be 10 people that are on the, on the it, list it's like a series of dominoes if somebody signs for another club that frees up that player who yeah. can leave and move on and stuff it's a nightmare isn't it you're, you're right you're tired no no I'll, I'll be at the end of this week we'll have a week we'll have a week to assess but let's get this out of the way